So let's look at how to paint a mountain sunset for beginners. And we're using Affinity Designer. And this is an easy start for those new to artwork. Starting with one simple painting, you can easily go on to ever more complex shapes as you learn the fundamentals. And in the beginning, it looks like this, perhaps. We'll start with opening a suitable canvas. Start with a new document in the presets already created. Just create a new document based on an A3 sized print mode. Now I like to set mine in inches, but the choice is yours. The background doesn't need to be transparent, but it's a good idea to select landscape mode and create artboard so that you're actually painting on an artboard. Press OK to create the new document and the resulting canvas you can see here gives you the default name of Artboard 1. So let's rename that to something interesting and I'll show you as we go through how we keep our document organised. Mountain Sunset sounds like a good title for it so let's give it that. And there we go. The new name canvas, Mountain Sunset, just keeps everything in place. Now let's begin with a background. Put a simple plain white rectangle onto the artboard. And there we go. Now, of course I'm using the iPad for this as you realise, and I've reduced the size slightly so I can see it all on the screen. I'm using a, an iPad Mini. You might be fortunate enough to have a full size iPad, but it doesn't matter because it's a 16 by uh, 16 inch whiteboard so you can, um, you can find your way around it quite easily. Now, add a guide. Add a horizontal guide about of the third of the way up from the bottom. This is your horizon line, shall we say. And you can see on the bottom there I've got show guides ticked on. When you finish with the guide, you can select that and turn guides off. Now, we're going to put a yellow base on it to start with. That's the sun. So we're going straight into painting. Enough of the technical stuff. We're going to start with the yellow base. Select the vector brush tool from the left hand side there and the fill color of yellow. Not the little donut circle. We want the fill color of yellow. Set the brush width to 2 inches. That's right. Remember, we've got a 16 inch canvas here, so that won't be out of place at all. And it's a nice broad brush and that's what we want. Now you can see down the bottom I've got a one inch brush selected there. But I did end up selecting two inches. But I've got 50% opacity. So you don't want a big solid chunk of yellow on the screen to start with. Select the diluted acrylic stroke number two brush. Now that comes with Affinity Designer, so you don't have to go looking around for new brushes. What you've got will suit very well. As I said, set the brush width to 2 inches, in my case, and a nice broad brush. You can see down the bottom there the width is 0 0.427, but that's not talking about the brush, that's talking about the stroke, and you can ignore that for the time being. There is an image of the brush there, though, all the same. Now, that's better. You can see the colour wheel, the full-size yellow. Where opacity is set to about 55%. And it's the big full circle, which means that's the fill, that's the brush. And I've just put a brush stroke across there. Don't worry about the purple line you can see in the middle. That go, You can get rid of that. That goes away. That's just letting you know where you're drawing or painting. So you can you can ba you can basically ignore that. Now brush strokes working from left to right, put down enough brush strokes to build the first layer. Think of it as paint. A good solid layer but not too thick that you lose the brush strokes and texture. Now because you've got 50% opacity it doesn't put on a big solid uh, patch of paint, as I said. 
it puts it on in nice layers that you can build up. The more you paint in the same spot, the thicker the yellow colour will be. And you can see that in places there. Now we're going to add an orange colour on top of the yellow. Add your orange above the yellow in the same way you did before in side to side strokes. Now I've used the RGB sliders here to get a nice orangey colour. And you can see the numbers 255, 152 and 2. Still 55% opacity. This time you'll be blending your orange into the yellow area. Be sure to leave at least an inch of pure yellow at the very bottom for the sun. Again, feel free to add more coats as needed. So you can even select a lower opacity, that's fine, and just put on even more strokes. And build up your layers as you go. Now we're going to add some pink. You might think pink in the sunset? Oh, well you'll see it will all come out in the end. Do the same with pink. And you can see the colours there in the RGB slider. Add as many coats as you need to cover the canvas and blend down into the orange area. As long as it doesn't touch the yellow too much, it'll look fine. When blending upwards, however, be sure to leave at least an inch of white space at the top of your canvas. This will be our night sky edge we'll start in the next step. Now, I haven't left an inch there, but it doesn't matter because I'll show you how we fix that. Add purple. Because purple is darker than the other colours, we will be utilising it a bit differently. Start painting with a purpley colour. Now I know that's not exactly purple, but it's pretty close. Start at the top of your canvas and blend down into the pink area. Be careful not to take it too far into the orange or you'll end up with a gross muddy colour. Your first coat of purple will probably look patchy and ugly, but that's okay. This is good because it means you're painting in thin layers and your end result will be smooth. Simply be patient and add more layers until it's thick enough. Remember to experiment and if something goes wrong, use the undo arrows. That's the bottom right hand corner, there's a left and right arrow there and you can set those on in preferences. And you can undo and redo using those arrows. So if you make a mistake, just keep undoing until it's fixed. Now the last chance to blend these colours, if the colours in your horizon are still looking blocky, this is your last chance to blend them to your satisfaction. It's much easier doing it this way. Remember to use very thin layers, that is, very low opacity. It can be tempting to try globbing on some thick paint for a quick fix, but the end result will not be as nice. Remember the horizon line we drew at the very beginning? We're coming back to that now. The lowest point of your mountains will be at your horizon line. So with that in mind, take your pencil and outline where you would like to place them. Now you can use the pencil or you can just use the brush and make the brush a much thinner stroke. That way you're not messing about with different objects and you can stay on the brush. Just remember when you're painting to bring it back up to the right width. Don't be afraid to get creative here. There are many different kinds of mountains. Tall, sharp, craggy, low and sloping, rounded and thin. Even some gently rolling hills would be fine. This is also a good place to cover up some of your painting's problem areas if you have any. For example, the left side of my picture had an issue towards the top, so I made that mountain higher to cover it up. Well, I didn't really. It was, it was a little patchy, but that's the idea. Be sure to leave some yellow peeking through at the base. You can't have a sunset without a sun, remember? Create a mixture of black and purple. This will be the colour for our background mountains. Experiment with this using the HSL palette as well as the RGB sliders. Setting the brush and colours for the mountains. Now there we go, I'm using HSL sliders there. And I'm trying to get a mountain colour. You can see right at the top there, it's a grey sort of colour that we've got there. Now that's grey because the opacity is set to 72%. 
if you make that 100%, it'll be almost perfectly black. Now we don't really want that. Now, outline your mountains. And you can see I've used quite a thick brush there. About half an inch, actually. With your medium brush, begin painting your outline. Create a silhouette that you like, either by precisely following your outline or simply using it as a guide. Don't be afraid of the dark paint. Now, that doesn't look much like a mountain yet, but it will. But that's where the mountain range is going. And you can see my baseline there, which is about a quarter of the way or a third of the way up the page. That's the baseline of the mountains. So nothing technical so far. Now, paint your mountains in. Once your paint outline is complete, it's time to take up your large flat brush again. This time, when you fill in the silhouette, your stroke should be in a more up and down motion following the shape of the mountains rather than side to side like with the horizon. The first coat will look terrible. Dark colours take more coats to finish, so if it still isn't looking good, be patient and persistent. It will get there. In this case, my opacity is 40% and the brush width is 0.5. That's half an inch. Brush type, still diluted acrylic number 2. So we're still not using fancy brushes. You don't have to go wandering around the internet looking at all the technical stuff and how do I load brushes and how do I do this. Just use what comes with designer. That's what it's there for. Now, paint foreground mountains. Take your brush again and outline some foreground mountains. These mountains can be lower or higher than your background mountains. Again, find a design that you like and run with it. On your palette, use some pure black paint, no mixing, and fill in these mountains. Depending on how much purple you put in your other black paint, your darker mountains may contrast a little, like mine, or a lot. Now, I'm talking about mixing paint there, but what that is in Designer is using a low opacity stroke of one colour and a very low opacity stroke of another colour overlaying it. Because if you overlay colours, they actually mix, and you'll get the desired effect. Again, not too technical and easy to follow. Now we're going to add some stars. The final step is to add stars, as well as any other detail you'd like to have. Foreground details and so on, we have to input. Now, where did I get the stars from? If you look down the left-hand side there, you'll see a star that's in... The shapes tool and in the shapes tool you'll find a star and I put a little group of plain white stars of just the right size into the night sky there doesn't look too bad so far now we'll add a foreground now those are big mountains so that's quite possibly forest in there but remember the Sun's going down you're behind the mountains so it's getting quite dark. You can't see the detail. As it's a sunset, the foreground will naturally be dark and indistinct. So brush in abstract shapes, perhaps in a dark green, still using the same brush. You'll notice on the right that I keep each section in its own group because you end up with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of brush strokes. So you can collect them together, group them into easy to maintain groups. Every stroke is a curve and this helps to keep the layer list easy to read otherwise you're scrolling up and down if you want to get all those layers or into all the strokes in a layer well it's easy. Highlight the first stroke go down to the last stroke you've done and use a double finger to tap and that highlights that entire list of strokes and then you just click the group icon uh, top right there, third from the left, and that will group them. And there you've got some nice little groups. Everything with names, so you know exactly where everything is. You might want to come back to it and change it. Now, it's finished. Now, this will never hang in the National Gallery. We know that, but it's a start. The finished painting. Now, it can be as simple or as complex as you like. 
But if you can do this, start at this stage, then you can work your way up to some things that are really complex. As this image is purely designer as well, there are no pixel layers in it. So you can scale it to any size you like with no loss of image quality. It's already on a 16 inch um, A0 sheet of paper, or was that A3? I forget, but it doesn't matter. You could make that image as big as the wall of a building if you like. You could put it up on a billboard and it won't lose any resolution or you could take it down to, I don't know, 100 pixels by 100 pixels for an image on a computer screen and it will still look just as good. And there you have it. That's all there is to it, really. Start out gentle and work your way up. What could you do with that image? I'm sure you would have lots of examples. You can put actual trees in the foreground. You can sharpen up the mountains. You can do a better job with the sun peeping through the mountains there and the odd colours, orange and pink, fading into the blue of the sky. You could make the, the night sky a lot darker.